How's it going guys? Welcome back to another JHR review. And today we're going to be looking at an Akai Boshi blue box. It's a thing of cookies actually and uh, I've never had one of these. I actually am kind of unsure what the inside is going to look like or really anything. This is what the back looks like gives you a little preview right here again a little bit of a spoiler but if you want to pause and check out the nutritional information it looks those it looks as though we have about 10 grams of sugar and about uh, half the box which is uh, not bad at all honestly and then again on the front we have this really nice almost hand-painted portrait of this lady right here really makes this thing feel super premium all right without further ado let's go ahead and open this up and see what it's all about slides out pretty easy and then it looks like we have a little pull tab right here I'm just gonna try to push it from the top instead. There we go. Alright. Very nice. Even has the little logo right there as well. Let's go ahead and pop this off. It says, the assortment may change in appearance subject to the season. Due to temperature changes, chocolate may turn white. This phenomenon is called the bloom. When this happens, it does not change the taste of the chocolate. Yeah, I've actually had chocolate that's done that before. It doesn't really change too much. Wow. Look at this. So, you know what this reminds me of? I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but uh, Matilda, this old kind of 90s movie. Um, there's always this box of chocolates that looked super fancy that the kids weren't allowed to have, only the uh, principal or the adults. But uh, let's check this out. Let's grab this first cookie in here. White chocolate almond. It looks like it has a sugar glazed almond on the top with a white chocolate base. That looks really good. We have a green apple something. I'm not sure. And then this one says it's a brandy ball. So it has some brandy in it. says it's a milk roll. There's nothing inside of it. This is a tea roll. This one doesn't also have anything inside of it. And then it's just uh, the same ones at the bottom. So let's go ahead and try this first one that I picked up because this looks really good. Look at that. Let's go ahead and try it out. Wow. Okay. That is really good. The crunchiness of the cookie and the milkiness of that milk chocolate combined together is amazing. Um, I didn't eat the almond off the top because... I'm not the biggest fan of almonds, so I can't really give an opinion on that, but the rest was really good. All right, let's go ahead and try this brandy ball. Interesting. Looks to be some kind of uh, white chocolate. That is white chocolate with a very, very subtle hint of, um, I gotta say alcohol, maybe brandy, maybe that's why it's called a brandy ball, 
but it's done in such a way it's really flavorful. I'm kind of nervous on this uh, green apple one though, because I'm assuming it's going to be a chocolate. I've never had green apple chocolate, so... Oh yeah, it's the same thing. Oh, all right, let's try it out. They did it in a way that makes the puck, the kind of the pucker of the apple actually accent the chocolate. And I'm really surprised that I liked that. I like that actually more than the brandy ball. Let's try out this uh, milk roll. See how this is. I don't really think there's anything inside of it. It's just a crunchy roll. That's really good. I could definitely see myself eating something like this with a nice little cup of tea or something. Let's open up the uh, tea roll. That's really good. I actually really like uh, that one as well. But hands down, this is the best thing in this box. These two right here, really good stuff right there. I like that a lot. Um, probably can't eat the whole thing right now, unfortunately. But uh, I definitely will be saving these for later. But yeah. And today we have some Sumiko Garashi gum packs that also come with uh, different stickers. I was able to actually take the box as well, which is kind of cool. So I get the, the whole little experience right here. These were actually only about 78 cents each. Let's go ahead and take out the first one. This is what the uh, front looks like. I think I like the uh, snail down there the best. It's funny, I actually have a uh, pet snail that I saved. And then, so what the back looks like. Looks like that's probably about 2.7 grams of sugar. I have some uh, writing down here in Japanese, but we also have the uh, web page as well, if you want to look that up. Very cute packaging. Pretty easy to take out. Let's turn it around. And, oh, wow, look at that. I've never seen a flat piece of gum like that. Look at a square. Oh, that's really cute. Right here we got a little bear with a frying pan. We got um, a little uh, rice ball, lunch box, a little bear eating one as well. Not the lunch box, the uh, rice ball. Some kitties, a little uh, round cake, drinking some tea from a portable container, and then we got a little bento box with them in there as well. That's really cute. This is 2017 Sanex for Sanexco. The back is just yellow. Then right here we have a little character on the back. And I believe that this is the one that is actually the gotcha of the pack. You get a different one. Oh, that's really cute. I like the little arms that are kind of going in like that. I'm not sure which one this is. Kind of looks like a like a little parakeet, maybe like a f little fat parakeet. It's really cute, though. We're in a little apron. All right. So that was the first one. Let's go ahead and open the next one and see if we get a different one. It is always possible I accidentally picked up the same one. Let's see. And... Oh, that is so cute. Oh, that's so cute makes me miss my kitty. Very cute though. I like the uh, 
little paw prints on the sides. It's so nice. Very cute. Let's put that down. And not only that, is you actually get different um, different stickers as well. I wasn't expecting uh, different stickers in them, which is really cool. So you get like uh, double the gotcha, which is insane because most gotchas are about four to five dollars, sometimes seven. I try to avoid getting a ton of those because I don't want to spend a ton of money on all those expensive gotchas because I want to be able to get a big variety of things so I choose what I spend most of my uh, extra money on which isn't a lot but you know so yeah these look really nice and I'm gonna take this one off and let's see what I got laying around here let's grab this old Alexa it's kind of dusty and dirty give it a little bit of a makeover. There we go, Alexa. Now you got Sumiko Garashi on ya. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and uh, try out the gum and see how it tastes. Assuming it's the same one in each, so. Wow, that's, that's kind of strange, like, you hear that? It's like a plank. All right, let's go ahead and try it out. So it has a very um, classic bubblegum taste, which is funny for me because I actually, um, I don't like the taste of classic bubblegum. I'm more of a spearmint guy, but my fiance should definitely enjoy these and the extra package of gum but yeah right here we have some Amorno uh, these are some headphones that were actually sent to me by a company it was really cool one of the first uh, free products that I received which is kind of nice um, this is what the box looks like kind of a standard kind of sleek packaging as you can scan the uh, app. Let's go ahead and uh, open it up. There's a little pulley tab right here. There we go. Ooh. We have a nice case in here. That looks like a little booklet as well. Let's go ahead and uh, move the box to the side. This is what the uh, headphone case looks like. I actually didn't know that it was going to come in a really nice case. That's pretty nice. Has a little um, clip right here too, in case you wanted to like attach it to your pants or your backpack or something. That's kind of neat. This is just a kind of standard booklet. It shows you how to Bluetooth connect the headset. Go ahead and uh, open this up and see what they look like. And now for the great reveal focus on that real good. There we go. Dun dun dun. Ooh, sleek. I like that. You see the little uh, sheen you get from the, um, kind of like a plasticky, maybe under chrome-ish kind of thing. Got some kind of little cable right here. Let's look at that first. And we have a micro USB charging cable. Let's plug that into your computer. Then we have 
Oh, it actually snaps pretty well. It's very, very springy. This is kind of a um, rubber resistant feeling material. Like I can't really rub my finger across it very well. You can kind of see it. It almost feels like something you put on the bottom of furniture so they don't slide around. It's not very soft. Though I feel like, you know, I've never used these before. I feel like maybe it's so it doesn't do this when it's on the back of your neck. So these are the headphones themselves. Looks like they come out like that. See so if we can zoom in on the uh, inside of the earbud. Kind of has like a very porous kind of uh, material. And how do I get this back in there? Ah, let's see. It might be a little loud. Let's uh, focus on it first. And that is nice. <laughs> that is so satisfying. Look at that. How cool is that? Now, the thing about that is how long is that gonna last? You know what I mean? Like, it's a very cool thing, but like, wires tend to break when they have strain on them, so I'm not sure how long this would technically last, but yeah, that's a very cool little concept, very uh, satisfying, very fashionable. This is the charging port we got right up here. And then, I don't know if there's already charge in them. Oh, here we go. Here's the um, on and off button. It looks like it was left on inside the case. Oh! They vibrate. Okay. That's interesting. And they have um, a little light right here. I'm assuming it's going to connect to the phone. So let me grab my phone out real quick. You don't see that, but it just um, connected in on um, here. And it actually shows you what the battery percentage is. And it says that they're at actually uh, 90%. So. And. I might cut this a little bit, or I might already have, but in real time, it was as easy as just pressing the button and it immediately connected. So, and just because these were sent to me for free, I'm not going to 100% uh, say that these things are great. I also am uh, going to say some of the things I don't like about them as well, just so I'm not uh, being biased about the price point. All right, so let's go to something that is royalty free. Let's see. I'm gonna pull this out and try it in my ear first. All right, so the bass is really good. The volume itself though is not as loud as I'd like it to be. And I'm not sure if I can, when I push the volume up button on here, it also changes what track I'm on on um, YouTube and actually changed what I was listening to. So these have really good bass, but the volume on them, I've already turned my volume rocker on here to 100% and the bass is really good. But I like listening to my volume on, on that wasn't a 100% either. I like listening to my volume like 100%, uh, maybe 8, maybe 90%, you know, maybe not to blow my ears out, but I feel as if it lacks the volume for the amount of bass that it's giving. They're not bad, and I'll definitely end up using them, but I wouldn't say that they're top tier quality. Um, I'm going to link these in the description below. If you were using these maybe for like jogging or running, that'd be good. But if you're going to use it in like a really loud environment, like if you're going to go to like a public park where there's like a baseball game going on or something to do a jog, I, I wouldn't suggest these because I just don't feel like they'll 
deliver the amount of volume you're going to need. But yeah, I think that these are a good option for people who might just want to, you know, jog in a more quiet location, or maybe if you're on the bus or something, I think that they could work. But like I said, the um, magnification of audio is just not there for me, especially since they're um, battery powered, you feel like they would push out more of a amplified signal. I really do like the uh, little thing that they got going on there. Not a big fan of how much uh, wobble they have. I do think that these will break relatively fast. And the plastic's actually pretty good. It's not like really cheap and bendy. I can't actually, you know, push into it. It's actually pretty sturdy. So, all right. And today we're going to be looking at this interesting Pokemon chocolate crisp, kind of. Very interesting. I've never seen something like this before. It's kind of uh, Pikachu shaped. It's by um, to Toato. And it looks as though you might get uh, some kind of gotcha inside as well, which would be super cool. Yeah, definitely. It looks like uh shows you what you can get on the side right here. So this is what uh this side looks like. We got a uh, Pikachu, Eevee, Bulbasaur, Charmander, Squirtle. I think that's uh can't remember. Uh Turtwig. Uh, Pip Piplup? Mm, uh, Poplio. Oh man. My uh Pokemon knowledge is failing me again. And then, uh, see what this side looks like. We got, a uh, Ho-Oh and Lugia. And that repeats back to the other side. Bottom just shows the date. Then let's, uh, look at the nutritional information. It says there's about, uh, 6 grams of sugar and about 2. 20 milligrams of sodium. And then uh, three grams of fat as well. Without uh, further ado, let's go ahead and open it up. Which has a really cool latch, by the way. Feels like I'm opening a Pokeball. Of course I rip it. <laughs> it's alright. There we go. This is what the inside looks like. that to the side and this right here is going to be the gotcha I believe hmm the food or the gotcha let's do the gotcha first it looks like we got Kyogre very cool I like Kyogre, actually. Looks like it's a sticker, of course, so you can take it off. Ooh, it's actually a translucent, too, so it's one of those ones. Those ones are really nice. Let's go ahead and put that to the side. This is what the packaging for the little crackers looks like. Interesting. Looks like a start to finish thing. Might be a little puzzle or something. Oh, that's really cute. We got Poplio and, uh, oh, that's Litten. I just remembered that. But I can't remember the name of a grass type. Hmm. Let me know in the comments below. I can't remember right now. Let's go ahead and open this up. This is what the inside looks like. They almost kind of look like uh, cinnamon, in a way. Let's see what it smells like. No, 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 no. These smell exactly like Cocoa Puffs cereal. So this is definitely chocolate. Alright, let's go ahead and try one out. Mmm. Wow. 
This tastes exactly like Cocoa Puffs, but a little better actually. It's like if you got a really big Cocoa Puff and just added a little bit more like, I want to say tangy sugar flavor, but some kind of like, just something about it that just is really good. Not to mention the cute uh, Pikachu shapes right here. All in all, I think that these were really good. And I would definitely buy these again. I'd like to put them with milk and just see how much they taste even more like Cocoa Puffs. But yeah, and today we have two new things. We have a brand new, really awesome liquid hourglass I got from Daiso Japan. And while I was visiting San Diego um, with my fiance for a uh, friend's wedding, we stopped by and got this little turntable right here. Watch as I uh, let go. It slowly rotates things to go on display and I thought, how cool would it look to be able to display my liquid hourglasses and interesting little things and have them kind of spin for you guys so you could see the more kind of intricate details. So this is uh, what it looks like, the little base at the bottom. It's solar powered and it works with a uh, AA battery, which I'm really happy about. So right now it's nighttime, so it's running off of a um, AA battery. But as you can see right here as it's spinning, it has all of these pegs. And they're in through here in these two different chambers. And the bottom is kind of a um, bubble reservoir right here, as you can see. It contains all the liquid in here like a bubble. Unlike a lot of the other ones, it was uh, completely flat and uh, it wasn't, you know, kind of protruded like this. Maybe I have something around here laying around. I can give you a good idea of what I'm talking about. This was one of my more popular liquid hourglasses and as you can see right here, it's not really protruded per se like this one is. This one's more of a kind of rounded off, um, just like part of the stand, but this one has its own kind of like, you know, special thing going on with it. I kind of like this a lot better. It's a lot more prominent and it kind of feels kind of nice in the hands too. Well, this one was just kind of, I feel, a little overlooked because it felt more like it was just part of the bottom of this. All right, so now that we went over the little bubble thing at the bottom that I really like, let's take a look at these pegs real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and put my hand there. Let's see if we can get a good zoom. Look at those tiny little pegs. Oh, wow, that's actually really cool. Kind of look like little spikes almost they're all connecting to each other and they're all separated into two separate reservoirs I believe yeah that's so cool look at that but we're not here to just look at the pegs and explain the bottom we're here to see how this one fares against some of the other ones that we've tried. We've seen ones that have moving mechanisms, we've had uh, different ones that uh, look like they were bobbing up and down like they were alive, but uh, let's see this one. Look at that. It's like, it's like they're, f they're kind of like upside down U's kind of reminds me of um, Millipede, the old uh, retro game, or Centipede. kind of reminds me of that, where you had the little guy at the bottom that needed to shoot the um, Millipede that came down and it would separate into all of these tiny little things. So I went ahead and turned it back upside down and now you can really see super up close how these things are moving. So on this side right over here, it's kind of like they're stacking on top of each other and then that's causing it to kind of spread out left and right. But now that the smaller bubbles are kind of gone, 
They're all kind of moving individually now, it looks like. Let's see if we can get a little bit more zoomed in on there. I really like how the pegs look from the side. Wow, look at that. See that one bubble pushed? So they're they're going to separate both. Yeah, see? Now they're both falling down. It's really interesting that the densities of these oils, even though they're against something rigid, kind of like these little pegs, you know, kind of thin, you think that it would separate them into two different bubbles or two different, like, tiny little uh, um, oil bubbles, yeah. But instead, they retain their shape and they kind of remind me of uh, that 90s movie with uh, Robin Williams, Flubber. Kind of reminds me of that. But that is just so neat. I put my hand right there too. Look at that. Completely maintains its shape. Let's see how it looks from the side. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on that real quick. So when you rotate it um, a few times, the bubbles um, get a little bit smaller from being jostled around. But you can really see, like, from the side right here, all of them uh, kind of just pushing downward. It looks completely different from the side. It almost looks like an alien or something. I like how you can see the ones right here on this side and then the reflection kind of like that from the water distortion from this side. That is so cool. I like how the white in the background really kind of emphasizes the little oils moving. You can really see the movement of it now. They're just like flip flop, flip flop, flip flop. It kind of also reminds me of those uh, coin games that you play at like an arcade where you try to get the coin to follow down the, some slots in order to push the other coins off the edge. Really interesting stuff. And today we're going to be looking at these Japanese gummy snacks by Senjaku. And these are actually by the same company, but this one was actually a few dollars more. I'm not sure why, but I know this one is supposed to taste like a soda, I believe. But I thought it was a really cute, and I wanted to be able to compare the taste of uh, both of these different uh, gummy candies. So... The first one that we're going to try out is going to be this one. It has a really cute uh, porcupine on the front. And as you see the paw, you're eating the porcupine paws. And you guys already know, if you've been watching my previous video, I'm not a big fan of grape. But some of them aren't as bad as uh, other ones I've tried. So. It says, Happy Nik Nikiyu, and then at the top it has some uh, writing in Japanese. And this is what the back looks like. It has a really cute uh, depiction of the porcupine, a little bit smaller, and you get the whole image. This is a how long it's good till. And it has 23 grams of sugar. Also it has it in uh, English as well, 21 grams in one container. But yeah, I also like the little depiction of the paw right there as well. But yeah, this is the first one. And then this is the front of the next one. You know, I'm actually looking at this now a little bit closer, and it looks as though it's going to be filled with something rather than this one is just going to be a solid uh, flavor or consistency. The polar bear is really cute and I also like the seal down here as well. And uh, this is what the back looks like. Another cute depiction of the polar bear. And then two paw prints as well. And then some little uh, snowflakes and this one has a uh, 24 grams 
All right, let's go ahead, open them, and try them out. Kind of messed up on that a little bit. Oh, there we go. No problem. This is what the inside looks like. Kind of has a uh, zoom in on that real quick. Kind of has like a shininess to it, like a stickiness, but it's actually not sticky. It's just covered in sugar, which is uh, not good for me, but probably will taste good. Let's see if I like it since it's grape. Not the greatest that I have ever tried, but I can actually stand this grape flavor. So I definitely uh, like this more than other grape things that I've tasted. I might actually buy that one again if I'm sharing it with somebody. Let's go ahead and uh, open this one now. Side of this looks like this one has a completely different uh, look wow look you can see right through it let's zoom in on that look at that so this one's supposed to have some kind of filling to it so I have no idea what flavor it is though because I can't uh, read Japanese so without further ado let's try it out So this one kind of tastes, I would say, a little bit like cola. It was my fiance that told me this was supposed to be cola flavored or soda flavored, but I'm not 100% sure because I have never tasted anything like this. So if you could let me know in the comments below what flavor this is, that'd be much appreciated because it's really good. but. I don't know what it is, so I think I might have one more actually. It just hit me. There was a familiarity to the end of this taste. I think this is a standard ramené flavor. If you don't know what ramené is, ramené is a Japanese soda comes in a skinny little bottle with a marble you gotta pop down at the bottom in order to get to the soda portion very interesting drink that's what I think it is that's my guess let me know if I'm wrong in the comments below all right guys I think out of both of these I ended up liking this one a little bit more but even though this one was grape flavor I think it still tasted uh, pretty good which is surprising for me and today we have two I wacko kind of collection packs of erasers and the second one is one I have never done before this is actually an eraser landscape and it's also a puzzle that actually comes apart as well which I think is really cool and I want to get a nice little zoomed in uh, kind of picture of this as well but yeah this is what the first one looks like Keep in mind, all of these little erasers in here actually uh, come apart. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out of its packaging and show you each of these individually. Go ahead and open this up. Kind of roll these out of here. Move this out of the way. So the first one we got here is a tomato, and this thing's heavy, it's thick, so I really think that uh, this eraser is going to last a long time, it's going to take a lot to get through this thick tomato. And then we got this thing, I'm actually not sure what this is, it kind of reminds me of a corn husk, 
but I'm not absolutely sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Interesting. Let me know if you guys know what it is in the uh, comments below. And this one's really cute. Kind of like peas in a pod. They actually come out too. I don't want to lose them. Let's see if I can get it out of there. Yeah, they just uh, tiny little balls of uh, eraser. But they go into the little pea pod. This one probably isn't the most practical because I definitely could imagine these getting lost if they uh, fell out. But it's still super cute. What do you guys think? Alright, now we got this uh, carrot right here. Which is really cute. Kind of reminds me of like a cartoon carrot. The top comes off and then slides right back in. And they went through the effort of uh, putting the little details on the outside of the carrot too. Pretty neat. And now we have the pumpkin, which I'm going to right off of the bat tell you this is my favorite one. I uh, am excited for Halloween. It's one of my favorite holidays. I like to uh, decorate the house. What do you guys think? Season appropriate yet? And the final one of the vegetables is the corn, which is kind of funny because the corn comes out of the husk, just like if you were to actually take it out of a, like a real corn, actually take it out of the husk, which I can't remember what the correct name for it is. I have a specific name for that. And now we have this really interesting landscape one. Uh, let's go ahead and open this up from the side real quick. That went right under the fingernail. Ooh. Let's pop this to the side and move these guys out of the way. Look at that. That is so cool. Whoa. Let's see how close we can get on that. I just noticed the, uh, the um, brickwork. You can see all of the little details in the brickwork going from the uh, front all the way to the little house, or shrine. <laughs> How cool is that? So I believe this is supposed to be Mount Fuji. I'm not 100% sure. Let me look at the... Yeah. It says Fuji San and Shrine. So I'm assuming the top of Fuji comes off just like the miniature one that I had before. Let's see if I can get this off of here. Oh, wait, it's starting to come off. Ah, there we go. Look at all those tiny little grooves. And it just slides right back inside. Assuming this little thing comes off too. Yep. Hey, even the uh, sidewalk or the little brickwork right here comes off. That's pretty neat. And then, of course, the... Oh, wow. <laughs> the roof comes off. And the uh, house portion comes off. I mean, the, uh, the shrine. And this does... Wait a second. I never looked at the bottom. Whoa. That is so cool. Look at that. They all kind of interlink together like that. That is so neat. And this would last you a long time, too. It'd be definitely a nice conversation piece. Let's zoom in on that real quick. That is so that is so cool. Let's pop that down so it looks nicer. This would definitely be a good conversation piece for like work or school or something. Nice little scene kind of refreshing. All right, guys, so which one did you like the best? Did you like the tiny little vegetables, or did you like the little scenery we got going on right here? Personally, 
I like this one the best. I think it's a really unique idea, but these are also pretty cute as well. And today we have another cat gotcha. This one is super cute. This one is called Meowditation. You can get a uh, meditating cat. And I also believe you can get a cat that's uh, cleaning itself as well, which is really cute. So that's what the front and the top look like. Here are some of the other ones you're able to get. It says a uh, figurine keyring. That's what the back looks like. And then I think these might be some other ones you might be able to get as well. Or might be uh, part of another gotcha. I'm not actually sure on that one. This is a, another one by Clever Idiots, which I believe is the same people who did the Why Am I Sushi Cat? But yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and unbox it and see which one we got. Alright, that's the best part, figuring out which one we got. And we got... Oh, we did. It wasn't part of another gotcha. We got a karate cat. This is so cute. Look at that. Let's go ahead and uh, open this guy up. Look at this guy. This is so cute. Of course we got the details and the little bean toes. This is a... I'm not sure what kind of cat. I think it's a calico. The eyes are pretty nice and detailed as well. With a smiling, confident facial expression. Kind of has a chonky looking side view, which is cute as well. The key ring for putting it on your keychain would definitely be a little bit of a conversation starter. Let's zoom in on that. Look at that. So its tail in the back is actually used to help it uh, stand up, which is uh, really cool. Look at that. Has really good balance too. And then there is some kind of printing on the back. Let's see. It says made in China and non P, which I think would be non plastic. I'm not sure. Kind of feels plastic, but I can't be sure. It might be one of those hand carved ones. Oh, that little bean right there. Look at that. That's so cute. I like this one a lot. It can go with my, uh, other weird collection of uh, awkward cat figures. Let's take one more close look at this thing. I think it'd be cooler if we took off the little thing right there. I might do that later. All right, but yeah. And today we're looking at a really cute little mixer that is battery operated. I got from Daiso Japan. And this is to mix together some milk, maybe some eggs. It's just a standard kind of uh, hand mixer, but I thought it was really cool that it's battery powered. Something that would be a lot easier to just grab and whisk versus hooking up an electrical one. So this is what the front looks like. It says removable mixer hand or head can be cleaned with water. And then it says uh, this handle is not waterproof, so I don't want to get any water on that. This is a little tall, so I'm trying to get everything on uh, camera. So we need to remove the bottom to put in the batteries, which I have on the side right here. A lot of uh, instructions in both, I believe, English and Japanese. But I think it's pretty self-exclamatory, so let's go ahead and uh, 
open this up and I'm going to make a basic cake for you guys. Get excited. There we go. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> I'll put this to the side. Stop messing around. What are you doing, Josh? All right, let's pop this off. All right, now with uh, enough force, I was able to pop this off. It looks like it's just two little uh, latches right there that go into these grooves. So there we go. And we have two Duracell AA batteries. One goes in that way, and this one goes in this way. So let's see. You'd think that it would stop with my uh, touch, but it actually, you know, did pretty good against it. Looks like this is how you remove the uh, head off of here, probably, but I'm not going to do that right now. Yeah, that's uh, pretty cool. I like the lime green color in contrast with the orange. Kind of gives it a futuristic yet old-timey look. Yeah, what else can I say about the physical build of this? Um, pretty solid plastic. Um, this won't be popping off and the batteries won't be falling out for sure because I struggled to get it off, which could be a good thing and a bad thing, I guess. Very resistant to stopping, which is good for mixing thicker things. And then the button is uh, easily accessible. So without further ado, let's uh, get some basic cake ingredients. So I have myself a little cup right here that has an egg in it already. So that's just milk and egg. And now I have myself a little concoction I made up myself. This is flour, Splenda, Splenda brown sugar, and then um, vanilla with uh, baking powder. Let's go ahead and try to not get this all over my setup. And pop it in here real quick. I might need a little bit more flour, so let's see what we got. Try to get it in there without uh, making a mess. I don't care too much about the flour getting on here as much as the darker stuff, because I won't be able to get it off of my white background. Now we have all of the flour and all the ingredients. Let's go ahead and mix it up. And I think that's still a little thin, but I'm going to try and bake this a little bit and see how it comes out. Let me try the batter real quick. Not too bad at all. A very good vanilla taste. Um, the sweetness from the Splenda, since I'm diabetic, um, seems to be complementing it as well. I still feel like it's a little bit too thin. But um, I'm going to see about baking it right now and see how it comes out. See you in a minute. All right, and there we go. I put it in the toaster oven. I actually used one of these bowls I had since I know they're able to be baked in. So you guys could see the uh, cake and how it turned out. Got a perfect uh, golden brown on the sides and then also on the uh, top as well. So this is what the cake looks like. Has a cute little bear on here. It says hello. I can't really. Don't want to burn my finger. Oh, yep, yeah, burn my finger. But yeah, no. Uh, I think this turned out really well. And let's push that to the back for a second. And that just proves that this little thing right here can whip up a cake within like the span of this video. Of course, not cooking time. But yeah, I definitely say if you see one of these, go ahead and grab it because. It did a good job. And today we have a Catherine Full Body Heart's Desire Premium Edition. This game is rated M for Mature and it is by Atlas. This is a puzzle game, a strategy puzzle game. And this is actually my fiance's. She just picked this up today and I thought we should unbox this because it, it it's big and it looks very interesting. So that's what the front looked like. This is what the, or looked like. This is what the side looks like. 
It has uh, the contents of the box and some funny looking sheep on the side. This game is a remaster or a rebuild from the ground up, I believe, of the original game with extra content. It says what it includes right here. And then it says the tantalizing tale of Catherine returns with new captivating characters, complex dilemmas, and revamped puzzle gameplay. Oh, gameplay features. As the line blurs between nightmare and reality, what will become of this sheep caught in the middle? Pretty cool. A mysterious new arrival introduces a new perspective, new puzzle features and challenges, all new story branches, cutscenes, and endings. Pretty cool. Looks like it's also one to two players as well. It says blood, partial nudity, sexual themes, strong language, use of alcohol, and violence. So it's rated in for mature. <laughs> And then the other side, I believe, looks the same as that side, except without that part on it. Yep. All right, let's turn this around. Without further ado, let's go ahead and open this up and see what all the hype is about. A uh, funny story for you guys, a little bit of background right here. Um, my fiance, she's at work right now, and she bought this before she went. And this is the only thing she's been talking about. And I was kind of poking fun at her, uh, saying how I'm going to open it and review it. Um, but in a jokative way, we have that kind of dynamic. But it's just kind of funny that I get to see everything before she does. Uh, but in a fun way, of course. went ahead and removed the plastic and now it looks like this just slides right off of there there we go pretty easy I'll put that to the side very interesting designs on the uh, outside looks like we have some kind of jeweled pattern some kind of sheeps holding up almost kind of like Roman pillars some uh, gold gems right there as well. Let's go ahead and turn it to the side. Looks like we got the same pattern. A little bit of different jewels. But yeah, looks like all the sides are almost identical. So is the Atlas logo at the bottom. And then the top says the logo. And then it has the open flap, so Let's go ahead and do it. There we go. Let's uh, pull this down. Looks like there's uh, two sheep whispering love to each other, I guess. I've never played the original, so I might actually uh, try to play this one. Because, I mean, I like anime, and I'm not a totally against uh, puzzle games. This is what the inside looks like. Looks like we got a plush right here. Go ahead and take that out first. Very cute. Looks like it's wearing the little boxers the main character wears. Nice detail in the eyes. Kind of chunky. 10 out of 10. And now, that was at, at the bottom right there. We got more design inside of there. It's a nice little feature they added. All right, now it looks like we have the Catherine full body art book. Let's go ahead and take that out. Oh, got something else in there too. And then it looks like we got a soundtrack pretty cool oh yeah here we go and a steel book case let's look at that first steel book cases are awesome look at that very nice artwork and this is what the back looks like Go 
ahead and open it up. It's got a little warnings pamphlet. And then let's rotate this. This is what the art looks like on the CD. And then we have some sheep on the background art as well. Very cool, very solid, nice steel bookcase. Let's go ahead and put that to the side, actually. Scoot in these guys. I'm not gonna open this. I'm gonna let her open it. I'm not gonna be able to play it due to copyright anyways. But these are the songs that come on it. And now we have the full body art book. Same sheep, a love thing on the back. Let's go ahead and open this up. Series really likes its uh, sheep. It says table of content, Vincent, Vincent Brooks, Rin, Catherine, Catherine McBride, Erica Anderson, Jonathan, Johnny, Ariga. Orlando Haddock, Tobias, Nibbins, Thomas Mutton, Trisha, other characters, character designers and commentary, and Catherine, Catherine Full Body Illustration Gallery. Let's see. This is the uh, main character. Kind of like his funny facial expressions. know um, all of the characters but this is Vincent Brooks Rin bunch of different designs for her different posings this is uh, Catherine bunch of different designs for her as well different sketches, facial expressions. Catherine McBride. I gotta say, they have a really nice character art. This is kind of something, this game is something my fiance, when we first got together, was really obsessing over. She'd play this hours and hours and hours in order to unlock, like, all the things and the timelines and puzzles and stuff. I admire her dedication. Whoa! That's from, uh, Persona. I didn't know that was within the same universe. Very interesting. We got some designer commentary, and, and I think we have some actual art here in the back. Very cool. This looks like a outfit and then like a bikini lingerie one. No? Oh. Looks like the front art. Just doing a little heart on that page. That's kind of cute. It has all these little sheep doing all these different things. I'll hold it up here real good so you guys can pause if you want. And then that is the end credits. You know, I gotta say, this is, uh, it's kind of weird. Um, I always kind of thought this about, uh, that about this game, but at the same time, you can't really judge a game or book by its cover. Um, without trying it out yourself, so I've been broadening my horizons on different types of video games, so maybe I'll give this uh, strategy puzzle game a try. As always, a huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for your support. It is extremely appreciated. If you enjoyed this game review, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. It really helps me out, and I love seeing it from you guys. 
And as always, I'll see you in the next video.